Hello and welcome back to Everything Tomo Tutorials. My name is Rebecca Escott and as you'll already notice that I've went ahead and sanded down my sublimated tumbler and I've already taped it off. Now we're ready to go ahead and jump right into this video because I have so much that I want to share with you that it's going to be worth your time. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and spray paint the tumbler and then we're going to immediately glitter with the Bahamas glitter from AB Designs. So once we've spray painted our tumbler, we're going to go right in with the glitter. Once you're happy with your glitter coverage, we're going to go ahead and tap off all that excess glitter and then we're going to go ahead and remove the tape immediately. We have our tape removed we're going to go ahead and put this back on the turner and allow this to dry before moving on to the next step now since our tumbler is already white in this section i'm just going to go over it with mod podge and then we're going to use bougie from ab designs in order to glitter in this white section i also at this point have yet to seal in the teal glitter that i previously used Anytime you're working with a dark and a light glitter, it's really important that you work with the dark glitter and apply it to the tumbler first. Once I've applied this white, once I've applied bougie into this section, I will then allow this to completely dry and I will seal the entire tumbler, allow that to dry before I move into its first coat of epoxy. So for this first coat of epoxy, I am going to be using Fast Set from Counterculture DIY. Once you're satisfied with your first coat of epoxy, make sure you use your heat torch to pop any bubbles that you may or may not be able to see. Allow this to completely cure before moving on to the next step. Now that our tumbler is cured, you'll see that I went ahead and taped off sections of the white. That's because I'm going to take this design in which I purchased off of Etsy and I'm just going to place what I find to be my most favorite part of this entire section. What doesn't completely wrap around, which isn't much, I will then piece and remove what I want to make everything make sense. As you'll see as we proceed through this particular section of the video. So once I overlap this through my tumbler, you're going to notice that I'm then going to take the X-Acto knife and I'm going to trim right along that tape edge and I'm going to remove what's overlapping that would essentially be on my bougie glitter that I don't want. So now that I'm happy with placement, I'm going to go ahead and remove the contact paper at this point. Once I've removed all of this contact paper from the tumbler, I'm then going to go along those edges that you see right there and I'm going to take out what doesn't make sense or what doesn't look complete. So then I can fill in the blanks around the front. So 
So here's more of a detailed visual on what I mean by removing what doesn't make sense and filling in with what does. So once you have all of your decals in place, make sure you tape off your glittered section and now it's time to go ahead and spray paint. So I've chosen Nutmeg, which is a satin from Rust-Oleum, as my base coat. So in order to achieve this tooled leather appearance, I'm going to be using a copper and a regular brown. I'm also going to be using a chip brush that I've gotten from Amazon. I will have all of these links listed down for you below. So once you have allowed your base paint to dry, we're now ready to proceed. As you can see that we can see our decals very easily and we will too once we add these two paints. And I already know what you're thinking, this nutmeg brown is hella hella ugly, but I'm sorry we have to see this through. Because even when I was working with this tumbler, I also thought, oh my god, this is absolutely hideous. I thought I had ruined it, but at the end of the day, it absolutely absolutely looked beautiful and everything came together and everything that had to do with that was that copper color that I used over top that's where the real true tooled leather came into play so I have definitely learned if anything when working with tumblers and making designs up and trying to be creative and make things happen is sometimes they don't always look like you hope or things just don't seem to be panning out. Just follow the process and things always seem to work out. So now that we have fully covered it up with the other nutmeg from Apple Barrel, it's now time to go in with a copper. Here's where I was truly crossing my fingers and praying to God this was going to work out. Now I noticed I was a little bit heavy handed and so I started to blend it in, which is not really what I was going for. So I do go back two or three times, I believe, and just add in more gold or copper. <laughs> so as long as you almost feather this on, you're not truly blending it in because I didn't really want to blend it in. I just really wanted it to be profound and show up and almost glisten without being a glitter. If that makes sense. <laughs> so please, please let me know what do you think down in the comments? I mean, please do tell me how ugly, hella ugly that brown was. And once I added into this copper, did we start to get that feel and that effect that I think we were going for? So once we've achieved our desired look for our tooled leather, we're going to let this sit off and completely dry before I start removing the peekaboo and the tape. So because I was trying to keep this video as short as I possibly could with so much information involved, I went ahead and got a head start on the peekaboo. As you can see, our Bahamas is really starting to peek through and it looks absolutely amazing. 
So if you look up tooled leather, there are so many options. And from what I found, teal is the most popular. So this was kind of my inspiration on this tumbler. So this section can be a little bit tedious, but once you think you've pulled them all, make sure you go back and double check. Most importantly, double check to make sure that you've gotten them all because there's always that one that's gonna sneak up behind you and you've realized that you've missed one. So I already knew with this Western style theme that I wanted to add in something Yellowstone. This particular decal came off of a 12 by 12 clear cast decal sheet from AB Designs. As you can clearly see, her name is written in cheetah print, which doesn't make sense for this particular tumbler. So I purchased a chrome paint marker from Amazon, which I decided to use to go ahead and paint in the letters and then add the glitter. So because I've never used a paint marker to apply glitter before, I was really not certain just if one, this was gonna work. So I had a baby wipe nearby, and two, I wasn't certain just how long it would take for this to dry once I applied it to the decal. So you will notice that I go letter by letter, taking my time to go ahead and paint these letters in, which really worked great because the letters were pretty thick. And as you'll notice, the decal's got a cheetah brown and black theme, and I used a chrome marker. You'll notice that it really didn't change the color of the glitter that much. Once I had all of the name completely filled in and glittered, I then allowed this to dry, and I went back in with two very fine paintbrushes in order to clean up that excess glitter so that I could seal this really, really well before I went into another coat of epoxy. I really hope you're enjoying this video so far and if so, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials coming soon. Also click that bell to get notifications every time I launch a new video.
So once you have given your glittered name some adequate time to dry, then we can go back through and clean it up. I used two different size brushes to really get in there and tighten it up and remove all that excess glitter. You really want to do this before you seal it. If you seal it with all that excess glitter, that's where it's going to stay and it's going to be much more difficult to remove. Now that our enhanced decal is completely dry, we're now ready for another coat of epoxy. For this coat of epoxy, I am going to be using Fast Set from Counterculture DIY. And as a reminder, please make sure you use your heat torch to pop any bubbles you may or may not be able to see. I allowed this tumbler to spin and cure overnight before moving on to the next step. Now that our tumbler is cured, we are now ready to go ahead with our bob wire water slides. I purchased these cute little bob wires in a collection on Etsy, and I'll too make sure that I have that link in the description for you below. So I sized these within design space and I just printed them out. I sealed them three times with a clear seal from Rust-Oleum. These small and any small decals do not need Plasti Dip. Plasti dip is only used for very large water slides and hence where you're going to wrap the entire tumbler with that water slide. So Plasti dip was not required for this step. And of course I had to go with bob wire because it absolutely one fit the decal perfectly and it's something other than what I'm used to using which is vinyl and nail tape. So once you've applied all of your water slide, you're really going to want this to completely dry before going in with another coat of epoxy. So this is the final coat of epoxy that was required for this tumbler, in which I use the Artist Resin from Counterculture DIY. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to find me on TikTok under Rebecca Escott, Facebook at Everything Tumblr Tutorials for continued learning. Remember, all the links will be down in the description for you guys below.
as always, make sure you use your heat torch to pop any bubbles you may or may not be able to see. And don't forget to let me know down in the comments if I pulled off the tooled leather look. 